here is your guided reading for this week. So the school's focus this week is mental health. So I thought it'd be good to focus our guided reading on mental health. And I'm reading you this as I sit in my jammies wrapped in a blanket because that's me looking after my mental health for today. So the text comes from this book that I bought called Looking After Your Mental Health. Um, mental health in children and adults is something that I'm interested in, so I read lots of books to do with that. Okay, so what is mental health? Your physical health is the well-being of your body. It's something you're probably very aware of. You know your body can get hurt or become ill, and over time it usually heals itself and gets better. But that's only part of your well-being. Everyone also has mental health. Mental health is a state your brain is in how it's feeling, thinking, and how it makes you behave. Just like physical health, mental health changes throughout your life. Mental health can be good, just okay, or it can be poor and make you ill. Looking after your mental health. It's really important to look after your mental health, especially as you get older and your emotions become busier and more intense, and there's more pressure on you at school and home. So, that might be you just now. You are that wee bit older, you might have more responsibilities at home um, and at school, so this is really important for you. You probably know how to look after your physical health. Eating broccoli, washing your hands, not jumping out of a moving car. But it's harder to know how to look after your mental health. This book is designed to help you navigate some of the challenges that might affect your mental health. It includes challenges everyone faces, from problems with friends and family, exams and social media, to less common serious mental health conditions such as depression and anxiety. Inside your brain. What do brains do? Your brain is your body's control centre. It's in charge of almost everything you do and it processes information from all of your senses to help you understand the world. So remember you've got five senses, okay, can you name them? Here are just some of the things your brain does on a daily basis. So it controls your heartbeat. So my heartbeat right now is quite slow and steady because I'm not doing anything. But if I was nervous or excited just now, my heartbeat would probably probably be faster. Um, it understands images from your eyes. So if you look at something and you go, that's green, that's your brain telling you that, you, that that's green, you know it's green identify smells like if you're walking down the street you go I can smell a McDonald's there must be a McDonald's close to here um tells you you're hungry which is happening to me quite a lot recently when I'm in the house and moves your arms and legs it does all of these things automatically without you even realizing so remember what automatically is like you just do it without having to like think out it you just do it the important part your brain has one more very important ability, an ability you probably associate with your brain more than smelling stuff or moving you about. It can think. Every minute of every day, your brain is thinking, wondering, remembering, daydreaming and feeling. So these are your thoughts. I don't know if you can see it. Um, some of the thoughts it says it was, if I was in charge, dot, 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 why are oranges called oranges? Oh, astronauts, my arm hurts. Are there aliens? Mmm, pancakes. Why is it raining? Lunch. So these are just all things that your brain thinks about on a daily basis. Where do feelings come from? So feelings or emotions are caused by chemical messengers in your brain called hormones and neurotransmitters. Happiness, sadness, excitement and anger, they're all caused by chemistry. Hormones are released into your blood and travel around your body. Here are three important ones. The emotions they trigger and what they do. So, adrenaline is the first one. Fear, anxiety and anger. So, those emotions are triggered by your adrenaline. Um, adrenaline makes connections in your brain fire really quickly sending messages around your body very fast to get it ready for action okay so 
well, I'm not I'm not going to tell you um, examples because that's part of the questions. Um, Oxytocin, I think, is the next one. Oh, oxytocin, I thought that. I just got it wrong. Um, love, trust and sympathy. Released when someone hugs you or holds your hand, especially when you're little, it calms your whole body down and makes you feel relaxed and loved. And the next one is cortisol. So cortisol is related to stress. It helps your body deal with stressful situations by reducing sensitivity to pain, increasing energy in the muscles and improving memory. So neurotransmitters help cells in your brain communicate with one another. Here are the main two that affect how you feel. Serotonin. <laughs> um, that's to do with happiness and sadness. Controls all your moods. The right amount keeps you happy, but not enough of it might make you feel sad or depressed. And dopamine. <laughs> I'm not a chemist, so I might be getting these words wrong. Um, this is to do with pride and excitement. So part of something called a reward pathway. It makes you want to do things to get a reward and makes you feel pleased when you do something well. Exactly how you feel depends on different chemicals firing through your brain. Why do we have emotions? Emotions can be painful. Being angry or upset is usually unpleasant, but emotions exist for a reason and do a very important job. They help people survive. This was especially important thousands of years ago. So here's a wee caveman illustration. And he's poking at what looks like a dead rabbit on the ground. Disgust stops you from eating or touching things that could be infectious or give you diseases. So, if you walked along the street and saw a dead rabbit lying there, maybe that had been hit by a car, you wouldn't automatically in your head go, Mmm, that looks delicious, I want to eat that. Your emotions would tell you, that's disgusting, I'm, I'm going to stay away from that. And love helps you form relationships and raise children. Fear gets your body ready for fighting or running away so you don't get hurt. So if you come into contact with a lion, you wouldn't woke up and start petting it. You would automatically be scared because you know that lions are wild animals and there's a good chance they're going to eat you if they see you. Your brain and body are linked up and intense emotions can cause physical responses in your body. For example, if you're scared, your heart beats faster and you might get sweaty or shaky hands. That's a hormone, nor adrenaline, getting your body ready to flee or tackle a dangerous situation. So we've spoken about this before when we were doing characterization about like body language and how you can tell how somebody's feeling. Emotions also strengthen your bonds with other people. Humans are very social and showing emotions outwardly helps everyone to understand each other. The expressions that show on our faces are the same all over the world. They don't depend on language or culture. So that's something we've spoken about before as well. Like when we were doing characterization, everyone has the same feelings and emotions. It doesn't matter where you're from, what language you speak, what religion you are. Everybody has these emotions. But everybody has different brains. During puberty, your brain gets rewired, forming a network of connections you'll have through your life. This is just part of getting you ready to be an adult. You're not going to completely change personality or wake up one day a different person. You might just notice you feel different, eh, sorry, you might just notice you feel emotions more intensely and often at the same time. Everyone's brain is slightly different, so it's normal to feel the same as other people, even in the same situations. So, here's some people riding a roller coaster, right? Somebody's terrified, somebody is nervous, and then look at this wee guy at the front. He obviously loves it. He's on the same ride, but he's happy and relaxed. So we've spoken about all this before as well during God's Love and Plan lessons um, about hormones and how they might affect your emotions and how you're feeling. So the power of sleep. One of the most important things your brain needs is sleep. When you're asleep, your body slows down, but your brain keeps going. It uses the time 
to process information, make memories and even clear out waste that builds up in the day. You need extra sleep during puberty, while your body changes and develops and your brain forms lots of new connections. If you can't sleep, don't worry. Worrying about whether you've got enough sleep doesn't help, but each hour of sleep you get will do you good. I'm sure you're all getting plenty of sleep now during this lockdown. So here's some things to try if you can't get a good sleep. Have a shower or a bath before getting into bed. The warm water relaxes your muscles and as soon as you cool down afterwards, your body's processes slow down and you feel calm. That does work because even if I've had a bath during the day, I'm really sleepy afterwards and want a nap. Keep phones, laptops and tablets out of bed. The bright light stimulates your brain, making it harder to relax. Light exercise is great for a better night's sleep, but don't exercise too close to bedtime or it will take longer to wind down. So if you go for a nice long walk or do some exercise in your house during the day, it will be easier to sleep at night. You'll be more tired. If you're thinking about a lot of different things and struggling to relax, try writing down some of your thoughts, such as things you have to do or ideas you have. Then you can forget about them till the morning. So that's really important. If you're worried about something, um, it does stop you from sleeping. So if you write it down, you know, I'm going to leave that over there and I'll get to it tomorrow. And hopefully that will help you get a better night's sleep. Try to stick to a similar routine, even at weekends. This helps your brain and body know when to shut off and when to kickstart again. So sleep is really important for your mental health. Even during this lockdown, I've still been going to sleep at my normal time um, during the week. So I'll be in bed just after nine. I'll probably be sleeping just after 10 um, because it is really important to keep in that routine. Plus, I'm shattered anyway, so I can't stay up. Right. And I've written some questions for you. Uh, 10 questions. So what number one, what two things make up your well-being? So you get all of these questions, uh, all of the answers to these questions from the text. Some of them you might need to think about, um, but you'll get them all from the text. Okay. Number two, define mental health. Remember what define means. Okay. It means to say what it is, say what it means. Um, so say what mental health means. Number three, why do you think it is important to look after your mental health? So you will get that answer from the text, but also I want to know what you think, why it's important to look after your mental health. Number four, give three examples of things your brain does daily. Number five, what is adrenaline? And can you tell me a time when you feel a rush of adrenaline, adrenaline in your body? How did this make you feel? So think back to what I said about what adrenaline was um, and think about a time where you might have had a rush of adrenaline, adrenaline in your body. How did it make you feel physically? So did you have sweaty palms um, or, and how did you feel inside? Okay. Uh, number six, what is oxytocin? Oh, sorry. Oxytocin. What am I like? What is oxytocin <laughs> and can you tell me about a time when you felt this in your body? Number seven, what do neurotransmitters do and can you name two neurotransmitters? You'll get that from the text as well. Um, number eight, why are emotions important for us in our everyday lives? So you will get the answer in the text but let me know what you think as well. Number nine, why is sleep one of the most important things your body needs? So you get that from there, but tell me what you think too. And number 10, tell me three things you can do to get a better night's sleep. Do you do any of these already or will you try them from now on? So 10 questions. Um, most of them are comprehension questions. Like you can get the answers from the text, um, but I'd like to know what you think about it as well. Okay, I've posted the text on the blog too and um, posted the questions so you can email me. My email's on the blog. I've just received an email from Mansoor, so thank you. It's lovely to see your name. Um, so, yes, email me if you, if you want. 
Okay, bye. Or email your teacher if you're in primary six or primary seven. Bye-bye.